Hello everyone, Jekyllo here, and this is uh, my Poker Knight deck, the Xyz version. The strategy for this one is to overwhelm the opponent with Xyz summoned, and if going second, put enough damage on board to OTK. There's nothing much to be said about this deck, maybe outside of the Sky Striker package and the Flint Lady. Those are here so I can get access to Isolde without the use of a normal summon. The normal summon should be reserved for King's Knight, since his effect can only be activated when he is normal summoned. The rest of the main deck is very standard stuff. The equips like DDR, Living Fossil, the Bamboo Swords, nothing very interesting here. The interesting stuff happens in the extra deck. Since we are playing Joker straight, we have to play a rank 5 light warrior Xyz monster and play these fits the bill. The other monster when it comes to rank 5 that we're playing is Shark Fortress. Since it basically is an OTK machine. When it comes to Pleiades, this is the only Xyz monster that needs two materials, which is accessible thanks to Joker's Straight. It fits those criteria. The rank 4... Uh, Parts of the deck consist of standard stuff like Abyss Dweller, Baguska, Tornado Dragon. Uh, but we're also playing utility cards like Diamond Direwolf, Digusto Emerald, and Gunslayer Omega because why the fuck not, and Gandiva because it's a disruption. We're also playing some Light Warriors, like again, because Joker's straight. Those are Star Leech Panel Dynamo, the Utopia Double Package, and Heroic Champion Excalibur. The only Link monster we need is Isolde, Two Tales of the Noble Knights. The side deck contains cards you can use in the deck. Photon Slasher is an interesting one, since it's a level 5 monster that can be special summoned if you control an Xyz, so should you resolve the effect of King's Knight, make an Xyz monster, you can summon Photon Slasher and go into a Shark Fortress or Pleiades. This is a very interesting play for the OTK side. The rest are basically rank 4 and other light warrior monsters that you can summon, but are not that good as Excalibur, the Utopia Double and Paladynamo. Photon Papal Operative is very neat, but the effect won't come up very much. People don't tend to set monsters anymore. The ZS Utopic Sage is kind of there. Delteros and Illuminate are very neat. Delteros providing spot removal and Illuminate providing even draw power. But the deck is not made for establishing three monsters on the field of the same level. So those cards are basically impossible to make. You, it's still doable, but it's not something I I think is possible, at least in this build. Uh, last we have the F-Zero Utopic Future and Utopic Draco Future. This is also very neat if you're able to establish two monsters with the same rank. But the deck consists of making one rank 4 and one rank 5. Making two rank 4s is not the idea here. So this is not something the deck is tuned for. You can of course make it that it's tuned for that, but this one is not. And that would be, that would be it for this deck. Now, let's see it all in action. And we're starting the first duel. The hand is not that great with double infinite components of Jack's Knight, Rhoda, and Living Fossil. But we are going first, so we can use the reinforcement of the army to get Imperial Bower. Imperial Bower is very important since he can just get himself out of here to get our us access to his Zold. Let's all do the trigger, send a lot of cards to the graveyard, so 
Queen's Knight can be summoned and then a Nibiru pops. Not great. But the token, the token is big. We set the double impermanence just in case. And we're playing against Toon, so this is going to be interesting. Toon Kingdom provides an additional disruption, so we can't do anything, but neither can our opponent, since the token is just too big. We're going to use the Living Fossil to bring out the our Queen's Knight, then Xyz into Tornado Dragon, and drop the token. We'll destroy the Toon Kingdom with our Dragon. Uh, the opponent will try to uh, dark rule no more, but we have infinite opponents in the common in the good zone. So we're now going to use our monsters so we can get into some pretty decent place. We're going for another result, getting the Imperial Power yet again, and we're going to use the token and assault to deal some damage. Everything is going oh they're not getting the power to the Joker Knight. Okay. It's, everything is still fine. We have engage. We're going to use the effect of dissolve to get Flint Lady and get the Golden Bamboo Sword. Use Joker's Knight effect and Queen's Knight. Special summon King's Knight and just proceed to decay with the Primal Being token. So the opponent's disruption was what led to his demise. And now game two, we're starting with a broken bamboo sword, a copy of engage, no not engaged, Hornet drones, Rhoda Impen, and our good and loved Ash Blossom. So the opponent is starting, so let's see. Divine Herald is getting ashed. So what are you going to do? Try to run oh set and pass. Okay, this is fine. We're going to activate Rhoda, get ourselves a power, and this is a very interesting play. Since the Imperial Power tributes itself, I can chain drones and get both of those monsters out. Now we're going for Isolde, getting the King's Knight, and proceed to do other shit like summoning Joker's Knight. Getting some cards thanks to the Cursed Bamboo Sword, and we're going to proceed to kick the ever loving crap out of the, our opponent. We're going to use the Mambuso to draw some additional cards, set two Imperms, and that will be it for our turn. The opponent will set more cards and surrender. Poor Drytron player. Not, not really. Fuck Drytrons. And next duel. We are starting with basically the same thing as last time. Double Imperm, a Golden Bamboo Sword. And one Imperial Power and one Drones. This is very important since, like I mentioned previously, power can tribute itself and summon monsters. So we're basically going to do that. Summon power, tribute power, go Drones, summon shit, get shit on board, make Isolde, get another power. We'll then use Isolde's effect, send five cards to the graveyard so we can summon uh, Joker's Knight. Then we'll proceed to see summon Pleiades, bounce a card back, use the bamboo swords, get shit done, and Nibiru drops. Primal token is big, but we are bigger, and Joker's Knight returns, shuffling that monster. Jack's Knight, oh, and the Harpies for the Dust is bad, the Skomata destroys our token, and Artemis drops, dealing us an insane amount of damage. However, now we have access to our Afterburner, which is going to destroy that Nibiru. Joker's Knight will trigger summoning uh, summoning itself as Queen's Knight. We'll be, we'll be able to summon Jack's Knight, and that will be it. We've basically cleaned the board out. Incantation will bring out Spomata's effect, but nothing really interesting happens. So then we will proceed to summon Imperial Bower to get Jack Knight and King's Knight back to the field, summon Joker Knight, and use it to sing XC summon Shark Fortress and attack twice for 2400 points of damage. Joker Knight will trigger itself, summoning it itself back to our hand. And the opponent scoops because we have just too much advantage. 
And this is going to be a very interesting one against Pepsi Man. Since we have Imperial Bower, we have Joker Strait. Our two Bamboozled, Broken Bamboozled and Golden Bamboozled and Living Fossil, and we're going first. Or not, we're going second. Which is even better. Our opponent just summons Photon Trasher, activates... Uh, oh my goodness, this is going to take a while. Collapse Serpent, make Striker Dragon, Wyvern Burster cuts back to the hand. Monsters are getting summoned left and right. Left and right, Tsuchinoko, Minerva, Mill everything, Chaos Creator, Summon Back, Mothman, Make Curious, Curious, Send Wolf, Wolf is summoned, more things are going to be milled, Making Saryuja, Drawing, Shit, Levianir, well, Levianir will trigger, Summoning back Raiden, We're going to summon uh, something else, Wolf is going to get triggered, We'll synchro into Chaos Ruler. Chaos Ruler will do shit to get us a, get our opponent the Chaos Valkyria. Once we were born with the Raiden, Saryuja will trigger Chaos Valkyria will be summoned and Burrowworld Savage Dragon drops. Now our opponent will exceed summon Hope Hop Ranger Titan and Galaxy. But we top decked that Imperm. That Imperm was crucial. And we're going to make our opponent use his last negation. And we will then proceed to do some really, really stupid shite. And since we're uh, activated Joker straight, we are going to exceed summon a lot of shit. Like our Utopia double. Utopia double will trigger and summon another Utopia. Our Pleiades will bounce back that copy of... Uh, Hope Harbinger Titanic Galaxy and Utopia will then proceed to attack the Saryuja for 7200 points of damage. We get back our Joker Knight and Joker Straight. The opponent will try and get uh, the Chaos Ruler back, but we're going to banish it thanks to Pleiades' effect. The opponent will try and do some shit and try and attack with his Borlode Savage Dragon, but our Utopia will proceed to stop that. We will then summon Zolds. Get Flint uh, Lady, activate Joker straight, send the Flint Lady, summon, 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 go into Power Dynamo, go into Flex a little bit, but the opponent will scoop. The deck is definitely interesting and has some sort of a power ceiling, which is, in my opinion, quite decent but it's a, the pool of the rank 4 and like in the rank 5 light warrior exceeds is a little too small to provide any sort of first 10 play it can provide otk material and give a really insane amount of damage However, it's not good enough for a first turn play. The best the best first turn play that this deck can do is what make a Pleiades and Pal Dynamo. There's nothing better that it can do. Not with Joker Straight in the equation. Without Joker Straight, the options are a bit wider. Still going to get into Pleiades, but it can also make a Beast Dweller, Baguska, or Gandiva, which are also very, very interesting options for negations and disruption. Anyway, I really like this deck. It was very neat to test out, and the new support really helps. However, I wouldn't recommend it for any tournament play. The thing is just not there. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching and I will see you on the stream where this is going to be tested live against people. Not with cherry picked replays. Thank you everyone for watching and I will see you next time. Jacob's hanging out. Peace!